Coleman reporting for Katie Chats at the TIFF Canadian Press Conference in Toronto. I'm here with the producers from Born to be Blue. Hi, my name's Jennifer Jonas. Uh, and I'm Leonard Farlinger. How does it feel to have your film here at TIFF? Well, we're thrilled to be back at TIFF. Um, New Real Films is the name of our production company. Uh, this is our 14th feature and I think our ninth in TIFF. In fact, last year uh, we met when we had, um, oh, two years ago it was, Gerontophilia. And, and, uh, and this film is a reimagining of a period in the life of Chet Baker, who was a trumpet player and singer, and the actor Ethan Hawke incarnates him in this film beautifully uh, with co-stars Carmen Jogo, who played Martin Luther King's wife in Selma, and Canadian star Callum Keith Rennie. Okay. And tell me a little bit about what drew, I mean, it's kind of obvious what might have drawn you to the project, but what really drew you guys to develop this project and make this film? Rob Budro is the name of the writer-director, and he brought us the script, and the script was fantastic. Great. Yeah, for, for us, it's always the properties. We're always looking for good scripts, and this was a this was a real ringer. And then uh, there was an openness to develop it, and I think that uh, we really worked with the script for a long time. And then when we when we approached Ethan Hawke to star in it because he was here in Toronto shooting, uh, we knew we were giving him a really strong script at that point. And then Ethan also kind of uh, help shape it into what it was because it's a very special and unique piece. It's really quite a, it's a beautiful love letter to Chet. It's not a literal historical fact kind of a movie. It's much more what you would expect a jazz musician to uh, to embrace. And what makes Chet Baker such an interesting character? Uh, well, I think there's uh, like he was he was an icon in many ways. He's a very beautiful. Um, uh, artist who completely assumed his beauty and his and his life to d drug addiction, and uh, and and I think that there's a mystery around that because it's so hard to imagine someone so gifted and so fighting so hard to define themselves with music, and at the same time so destroying themselves. So on one side they're survive they're survivors, and on the other side they're just self destroyers. So for us. I think that's always been the, the, the mythology around, around Chet, and so our movie does... Also, sorry to interrupt, but also there were some distinctive things about Chet Baker uh, in his time compared to other jazz greats at the time, and just to mention two of them, one is he was a white guy living in Los Angeles as opposed to a black guy living in New York, and secondly, uh, and our film very much deals with this, uh, because he had his teeth knocked out at a certain point in his career, in order to have the chops to play the trumpet, he started singing. So at his concerts, he would sing as well as play trumpet, and some people consider that an absolute taboo. Well, he was criticized his whole life, actually, as a player and as a singer. But, uh, you know, his, his records are still selling, so people love him. I mean, uh, I, think that, I think that what our movie does is it creates a situation that never really happened, uh, but it also, ha uh, it's, a, it's a love affair that didn't ever actually happen, but it's also through a period where he, he went straight. So it, we tried to look at the addict through a period of hope and not just the, 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 the cardboard cutout version of him that we have, that he's just this cool, aloof, very difficult drug addict. We started with a what if, and this maybe is a spoiler, and I shouldn't say it, but our oh, bless you. Our what if is um, it did actually happen that Dino De Laurentiis, a famous uh, producer, asked Chet to star in a movie about his life, and that movie never happened, but in our movie it does. Okay. And I don't know if I've said too much, but well, that's the first ten minutes, anyways. <laughs> I won't tell anyone. Um, and where's the best place for us to follow the film online? Well, um, newrealfilms.com is always a good place to go looking for our movies. And uh, the, the most up-to-date stuff will be there, but I, I think you'll, I think you'll hear a lot about it. distributed in Canada by Entertainment One, okay. and we don't know their plans for distribution yet, but eventually that would be a good place to to look, but in the meantime, newrealfilms.com. Great. And there's a lot and of... that's real with an A. <laughs> okay. That's so true. Um, 
there's a lot of enthusiasm about the film, so I think it'll be very easy for people to find it online and to find it uh, in their theaters. Okay, well, thank you so much. Congrats on getting Producer of the Year last year as well, and congrats on TIFF. Thanks, Thanks so much. Thanks, We're so happy to be yeah. here. the show if you like it please please subscribe also when I'm not interviewing I am an actress and if you would like to check out some of my acting you can click here uh, thanks again guys